A good segue into the uh, the net neutrality thing this week. Obviously, that's more bad news. I mean, this is, it's maybe, not good, folks. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's bad all around. And uh, because of the net neutrality thing, we've all now been introduced to uh, a guy named Ajit Pai, who is in a very short amount of time become, for me, one of the most nauseating human beings on the planet. Oh, my fucking God. It's like he takes this very like 2010, like nine gag Internet culture where it's not enough for him just to issue all of Comcast and Time Warner's policy positions through the regulatory body. He also has to be like, oh, don't be sad. Uh, did somebody say Opa Bacon style? Here's a troll face for you. <laughs> and it's like... I have not kept up with this, but he, is he in is the early 2000s internet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did ever, a Harlem ever. Shake yeah, yeah. video. I, I wanna, yeah, I want to talk about this. Okay, our, our, one of our favorite guys, Benny Johnson, who is now reporter at large for The Daily Caller, had a piece this week called Ajit Pai wants the internet to know you can still Harlem shake after net neutrality. Amber, just look at this look at this image here and and then immediately oh, go God. mad <laughs> from its horrific revelation. He's in a Santa costume with a fidget spinner and like a Nerf gun and he's like Unregulated. How do you do? This is a genre. This is a classic genre. Like they did that. Like Simpson did this when they were trying to sell Simpson bowls. He did some video that was just like it was. um, Oh, uh, crumping for the deficit. No, the the Korea, the big Korean song that went. Oh, that, oh Gangnam Style. Yeah, yeah, he did a Gangnam Style video. Oh, it was also like to be. sell cutting Social Security. Oh my and God, it, there, this is like a genre of, of conservative like. communication uh, that it's there. It's like like Time Magazine used to be like this. Like if they would cover something that was like eight years past its peak and. This, I mean, Ajapai went around actually during the last net neutrality fight, and he was on all the conservative media. I remember a moment where Dana Loesch um, said to him, like, you're going to get Vince fostered if you keep doing this. <laughs> and, and I had to explain to everybody in my office, like, what that meant and why Dana Loesch knew what that was and why Ajapai did, but no normal human being knew, <laughs> knew what that meant. And, and for people who were, you know, were not around during the 90s, Vince Foster was well. I mean, people well, I mean, probably know that now. He was murdered by Hillary Clinton. He was murdered yeah. by Hillary Clinton, and then they dragged his body to the park uh, <laughs> to throw everybody off. And but the idea that like he was going around onto Dana Loesch arguing about net neutrality. I mean, he went to every single show, and they thought that the Clintons were going to assassinate him for it. It's just the. They're, it's it's completely untethered to the issue, and that's why they get able to Look do this. this. Yeah, this. I mean, like you, Sam is right. I mean, I think. Donald Trump Jr., the brains of the operation, <laughs> like had a tweet where it was like, it was very clear that he thinks net neutrality was like a rule that Obama invented where it's like, uh, for every conservative comment, there must be uh, two liberal comments. Glenn Beck actually <laughs> believed that. Yeah. When net neutrality was first a thing. Glenn Beck did a series of shows where he thought net neutrality was like a fairness doctrine. Yo, so he'd be like, yeah. he, he kept yeah. being like, he'd be like, my site, The Blaze, will have to publish communist writers. <laughs> uh, Virgil did a funny... He, that was Virgil on the, on the account where he said, we've always been in favor of net neutrality, which means never taking sides. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, is that that's the beauty thing of the, of the polarized moment now, is it's something that if you explain it to him, 90% of people would be like, I don't want that. I don't want somebody to just be able to determine out what I can see and how much I have to pay for individual tranches of the internet. But if you put it in partisan terms, there's like, what, liberals like this thing? It's Wait, actually bad. I no, don't to, like no, it now. To be fair, 75% of Republicans are in favor of it. And I think for like... But the, the, like, but it, there, it still ended up getting slotted into this partisan divide. Oh, yeah. yeah but I, I mean, I think for some of that, for guys like Mark Levin and shit, it's like, okay, that's obvious. And Dana Loesch, it's like, that's obvious. Their entire careers are paid for by like fucking... Uh, think tanks and uh, advertisers from the telecom industry and shit. But I think, yeah, for people like Donald Trump Jr. or for like, you know, PJW, they're just fucking stupid and atavistic and anything that they see like one people on the side of, they're like, oh, are you triggered? Right. Are you yeah. triggered by net neutrality? And you're like, it, I mean, their positions are completely incompatible because earlier this year, all the conservative media people were saying that we need to nationalize Google and shit. 
which is and and Facebook like these and then the internet's a public utility which I agree we with. should yeah, right. yeah. Was, right. but that was only because like they Alaska they didn't got know kicked that off that of Twitter was a left or something value. they yeah. did right it, they only said that because like you know like because, what, because uh, like the Google Doodle for one day of the month wasn't celebrating Curtis LeMay's birthday <laughs> yeah exactly yeah because it was like uh, someone on Apple's board was like diversity is a value and so they're like this is communism we have to nationalize it but then to believe that but then to also go oh yeah ISB should be able to charge whatever they want they should throttle any data uh, I think you're right though it's entirely based on this anta- politics of antagonism yeah they just literally see people they don't like pushing for something they're like oh that's gotta suck <laughs> <laughs>